Hola, soy, me llamo Pergui Palma, um, soy diseñadora, ilustradora y Latin artist y vivo en Barcelona. Um, en un principio a mí me gusta mucho hacer lettering, así mezclado con ilustración. Y hace un año hice un taller con un amigo mío, se llama Daniel, para Adobe. Eh, se llamaba Make It y construimos de una, hicimos un sistema de una tipografía, un modular type, y hicimos un workshop con 35 personas y era, a mí me gustó mucho lo, lo que surgió de esto porque incluimos a todas las personas para hacer un alfabeto junto, que era rollo una colaboración digital y eso me gustó mucho. Um, yo uso bastante, uso ilusiones ópticas, me gusta usarlas, Um, porque es que da la imagen una segunda capa, más o menos la gente se para, ve una imagen, pero luego se queda ahí parado y dice, va, es que veo un mensaje atrás de esto. Y eso intento casi esconder en cualquier imagen que hago. El próximo reto para un creativo será que las máquinas, los ordenadores, que te ayudan más y más y menos realmente el trabajo físico de crear imágenes, Um, tendrás que hacer tú, pues es súper importante que la idea, el concepto, atrás de un trabajo, queda fuerte. Es como, porque es, yo creo que al final habrá, ya con las nuevas cosas que, que tiene el Adobe Photoshop, por ejemplo, de reemplazar los, los, cuando tienes un perro en una imagen, lo quieres quitar, um, eso lo van a hacer máquinas. Y yo creo que es el concepto original atrás de una obra, que siempre se queda más o menos contigo. Un consejo para jóvenes creativos sería mm, trabajar unos años en una empresa y en una muy buena, pues la mejor que hay para aprender mucho, porque yo creo que los primeros años cuando alguien empieza a trabajar es importante que trabaje con personas que saben más que uno en sí, es que es como una escuela. Yo estuve siete años en Basaba y es una gran parte, hace una gran parte de la creatividad que hago hoy, es que he aprendido ahí. Que luego cada uno desarrolla su estilo, pero es que los pases um, vienen de trabajar con gente muy buena. Es que yo lo haría otra vez, yo me, haría, me buscaría el mejor estudio que hay y man, mandar el portfolio y llamar mil veces y luego entrar a hacer las prácticas o estar al menos dos o tres años ahí antes de empezar a buscar su propio estilo y su propia voz. Mi filosofía atrás de muchos trabajos um, es ninguna, que soy muy vaga y me gusta usar sistemas y es como me gusta desarrollar un sistema para, por ejemplo, una ilustración y luego usarla otra vez. Eso ahora suena mal, pero la verdad que es muy, muy bueno porque así se aprende de este usar o crear algo desde con una simplicidad y luego sí que sí se puede desarrollar más y añadiendo detalles. Así como, en mi opinión, siempre, que eso digo a mis estudiantes, porque yo soy profesora en Austria también, digo que, tienen que si tienen un problema, tienen que quitar todo lo que molesta y luego ver solo el problema en sí y encontrar, por ejemplo, un icono que soluciona esto y a base de esto um, empezar a desarrollar un concepto. Para el proyecto uh, The Fluid Self, en un principio estaba buscando mucho tiempo, mucho material en Adobe Stock, porque yo lo que me gusta um, conseguir en, en ilustraciones es que parecen tridimensionales, como podían ser de verdad, pero realmente no. Es que me gusta quedarme ahí en este niche y estaba buscando un montón de tiempo y yo creo que me bajé la, el preview de 30 imágenes de estatuas y otros 30 de texturas de, um, de piedra y de mármol porque es que soy bastante crítica también, es que luego solo me gusta uno y además como el, el cubo, el Rubik's Cube tenía, a ver, tiene diferentes lados, una perspectiva bastante particular, así como tenían que encajar, las, esta, las estatuas tenían que encajar a 100%. Así, luego me quedé con dos, creo que con dos imágenes, pero es que pagué un montón. A un creativo nunca le pueden faltar las ganas. Yo creo que es, es imposible aprender si uno no 
pone todo su corazón en crear un trabajo. También en un principio es que hay que estudiar y hacer cosas para luego hacer, para que salen perfectos. Pues ha sido un honor. Espero que mi primera entrevista en castellano ha sido buena. Me perdonáis los errores gramáticos, gramaticales, ¿va? Y ya está. Gracias. Hola, buenos días. Um, gracias por estar aquí, con resaca o sin resaca. Um, voy a dar la charla en inglés, así todos entendemos todo. Así, hello, everybody. Um, first, thanks for inviting me, thanks for being here. Um, this is like a very awesome location. I've never been here before. Um, to start, let me introduce myself and also like how I got here. Uh, my name is Peri Palma. I'm Austrian, um, but I'm living in Barcelona. I've been living in Barcelona the last 11 years, I think. Um, I'm obviously not Spanish, but in the 11 years I learned to speak pretty well Spanish, I think. <laughs> um, I do illustration and lettering, also like kind of a little bit of design, depending on the like on the brief, which is coming in. So, I've made a timeline to show you like kind of how I got here. My childhood, I spent in Tyrol in Austria. I'm from a small village in the mountains. Um, the most known person for this village is Heidi. <laughs> I'm even like, I look a little bit like, a, like her. <laughs> Um, to show you, like, I'm, my parents lived there where the dark dot is. So, if you want to go skiing or enjoying the mountains, I highly recommend you to go there. It's a little bit expensive, but it's very nice. Um, as you can see, this is like my village. It's very small, I'm living like up the hill. It's pretty green there. Um, my childhood activities were going outside, um, hiking, snowboarding, going down the hill with the sledge. That, w that was like the good part. The bad part is there are no bars, there's one restaurant, one shop, so there's like n not that much to do. So because there was not that much to do, um, I soon discovered my true calling. I was like highly attracted to my father's computer. And I started like my early career, my computer career, playing Counter-Strike. Mm. Practice makes perfect. And that means like in every, whatever you want to do, if you practice enough, you're getting good at it. So when I was young, I spent like my daily four hours playing Counter-Strike, um, training. Um, eventually, like years later, I made it to the female national Counter-Strike team. <laughs> Not that there are a lot of girls playing Counter-Strike, <laughs> but I was one of them. Um, I continued with that until I fell in love with somebody else. His name is Photoshop. Um, I really like to play around in Photoshop because I discovered that you could get rid of your cat's red eyes. And you could give it like a beautiful flair. I really love the flair of um, Photoshop. So I played around pretty a lot. Um, I spent like the four hours I spent, I used to play Counter-Strike. I used them to, to study, I don't know, a lot of tutorials of Photoshop that eventually like then I got so good in it that they admitted me to the University of Salzburg, still in Austria. Um, what I studied was called multimedia art, so I did a little bit of 3D, a little bit of design, a little bit of audio, and I sucked totally in it. <laughs> so I stayed with design, because I thought like 3D is very hard to learn. You have to be a very freaky person. So I thought I'd rather stay with design and illustration. <laughs> 
Um, after multimedia art, I got to do a short internship in the States, and the studio was called World 49. It's a very, like, this is a very fancy um, photograph of their studio now. When I was there, we were just four. It's like the two of them and um, two interns. One was me. And we had a lot of work, which means I was very overwhelmed about how much work they had and what I should do there, because I was, like, practicing. I, I knew the programs, but suddenly, when you do an internship and you start the work, it's like they have like different tasks. You have to know vectors and composition. I was like, oh my God, I don't know that. So I spent six months there um, trying to get into the flow. I learned a lot about composition. I, got, I fell in love afterwards with Illustrator, <laughs> which is like, kind of easier than Photoshop. And then even like being in New York, I went to one of the first uh, off festivals and I saw a company from here. Um, it was a very fun studio. They spoke a very bad English, but they had like marvelous work. And I applied there. And funnily enough, they wrote me back. Somebody who spoke English wrote me back. Um, so I came, arrived to Spain. I came to, I finished my studies and applied at the studio called Vasava. Uh, I applied there. Um, searching for a job, and they said, okay, welcome, like, come to Barcelona. Um, that was where the crisis started. So I spent, like, my last 10, 11 years in Barcelona. It was very nice, because I was working with 15 guys, and me, the only girl, it's always like that. <laughs> um, I learned definitely a lot. Like, what I learned in those two companies are the base, where, like, including the university, are the base what I'm using like now to produce work. So after seven years of spending in Vasava, I decided to try it on my own, because you have to advance somehow. Also, like, I'm a girl, I sound stupid, but I'm also running out of time. If I want to make a studio, I want to have a studio, I have to start now. We are... I don't know. You can, you can say, like, you never... I think, for me, I prefer to do it rather sooner than later. Uh, once in Vasava, at a Christmas party, um, I had a backlash um, to my early career. We went playing laser decking. <laughs> and as you can see, I loved it. <laughs> to show you more or less what I do, it's like a, a fast overview about, because I think my work is pretty mixed. I'm doing a lot of illustration, I'm doing a lot of lettering, and preferably I merge those two fields. Regarding today's presentation, I thought it would be easier um, to base everything on where I take my inspiration from, because that's mostly the ways how I get to my designs. So what does inspire me? That question pops up pretty often in interviews or like questions just people ask me, um, because there's a, nowadays there's a lot of stuff which can inspire you. So how do I start my project? And, and how does inspiration influence my work? One thing which inspires me, inspires me a lot are blazes. Um, blazes sounds very universal, it's not just travel, but it's like places where I live, um, where I travel to, where I studied, where other people, which I know, are from. It's also like different architecture. So I think the word which defines very well is like something different. Um, a couple of months ago, uh, Samsung came to me and asked me to design sound bars. I don't know if you know what that is, it's like the, the loudspeakers which are below the television. So you have like Dolby surround sound. A couple of them, um, like, they came to me and asked me to design something on top of the sound bars. They, like, in the end, it would be spray painted on it. I asked them, like, should I do it? And they're like, no, no, we have a good studio doing that. I was like, okay, that's better. And the topic was completely free. So I thought, okay, um, I have a hard time in developing work where I have where I can do everything, 
It's just like, okay, where do I start? So I thought, okay, let's, let's take some inspiration from the place where I traveled like the last time. And I went to Costa Rica. It's like a super beautiful country and I'm very, I really love the, the nature which is still there. I think even if you're living in a city, like the best thing you can see in Barcelona is a mosquito. <laughs> so like this was what stayed in, to my, in my mind, kind of. And like, actually, it's not the animals, it's more like how hard they are to see, <laughs> because they are like very good in hiding. So I took this idea, I thought, okay, I'm going to make that. I did um, some sketches, I'm like very good in sketching, as you can see. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm making like swarms of anim animals on top of the sound bar, and they're like kind of hiding, overlapping each other. Like the next place which helped me like doing that or got me the idea to do that was Barcelona. This is like a sculpture of um, Joan Miró. I pass by, by with the bike every day because I'm living next to it. And in general, I really like his works. So um, this work is called The Woman with the Free Hairs, which I find like pretty funny. <laughs> um, what I like about this one is it's like very sh simple, not even geometric, but very simple shapes which are overlapping each other. And like the intersections, uh, which have a different color, um, they are like, they are making out the whole artwork. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make, use these intersections in my work too. To show you, I also tried to show you like some in-between tests I did because I'm always saving like loads of files, so this was something in between because I then started to develop the animals and I thought, okay, I'm going to make it like very geometric because like somebody has to paint it on the sound bar. Um, and then like the hardest time I had with the snake because it's very difficult to make a friendly snake. And it's just that you can see like I'm not mostly, I'm trying a lot until I get to a result where I'm kind of satisfied. This was uh, another step. I um, started to test how it would look if you overlap it. Like if there are too many um, shapes on top, you lose kind of the sight of the, of the butterflies. And those are the finals. I did three of them, one with birds, one with butterflies, and the last one was my favorite one, the snakes. Those are all three of them together. I was kind of satisfied because I do not work uh, very simple. I like to load it with a lot of details and that for me, this is very simple. I was proud of myself and then I gave it to the guy who had to airbrush it. <laughs> and he, like the agency I did that for was uh, Factor Free. He, those, this is like a German agency. And they gave it to them <laughs> and the guy wrote me in German. Like they're very polite, he wrote me, oh, Oh, very nice designs, but in the end he's like, okay, fuck, oh my god, you made a beast, like how should I put that on the sound bars? And I was like, okay. It took them three months <laughs> to put the design on the sound bar, but they turned out very, very nice, so I'm like very happy. <laughs> so what else does was uh, inspiration like of places? Uh, what else does inspire me? I'm very into optical illusions. I think it's just amazing how you can use two layers in one image to transmit like two totally different messages. So I like, in general, I like things which fuck with your brain. You don't know um, where you should look first, like which layer, they're like double narratives, um, you're playing with the perspective. Um, th those are like different examples from a lot of talented artists and one Google Maps glitch, where I think also pretty funny. So, also maybe I thought about that a lot, like why I like that. Um, I'm very short-sighted, I see very bad. Like, now I'm wearing glasses, I see obviously very good. Um, but as a child, I had a lot of time where I faked it. So, I couldn't see what was on the billboard, but kind of like I made it out. So, I never knew if it was a nine, a G, or something else. 
I have the same, the same principle I use, I use now to make optical illusions. It's just like, okay, close your eyes and imagine what else could it be. I started to work a lot with optical illusions, um, doing work for 36 days of type. This was a welcome opportunity to just try out different things. I even like, started with that still in Vasava, because I thought, okay, take 30 minutes of your time, create one letter every day. It's kind of like to see how far you get. And like, it's the same as playing Counter-Strike. The more you do, the better you get. So eventually, from those things, if you look at the F here, they got me some work. It's nearly the same. <laughs> So, Los Logos came to me, they have, it's like a book, tutorial, a German a tutorial who make, they have like compilations of logos and they asked me to do um, the cover. And I was like, oh, that's very nice. And they said, please make it an optical illusion. I'm like, okay, fantastic. Um, so that, and then a lot of other um, works followed until um, one day an email popped in and it was from Adobe, like, actually was from Adobe Stock. They have a digital trends program on their page. They present a trend for every month. They write an article for it and invite an artist to interpret the, the theme. So my topic was fluid self. It means like um, identity is evolving. It's like it's not, it's like breaking up. The stereotypes are breaking up. They are, it's not just black and white anymore. I thought that's a very interesting topic. And like my first idea how to solve this was um, to use a Rubik's Cube like as the possibility um, to show like the, the possible changes um, of, of um, identities because you can turn the Rubik's Cube however you want, you always get a new face. So I also wanted, I'm, I'm a little bit into Greek statues, I think they are like very beautiful and as like Adobe Stock provided me with, with 100 credits and I could download a lot of pictures. So I thought I'm going to work with photographs, which is easier than to draw them. So th I'm going to like go over the workflow a little bit. That was my first sketch. Like in the end, it looks totally different, but the idea, like just to sell the idea to the client, this is, this is good enough. So, um, I thought like, okay, if you make a Rubik's, Rubik's Cube, I think impossible or optical solutions work pretty well if you make them look quite real. And to make it look quite real, it's good to use photos. So what I started to do um, is creating the Rubik's Cube, which was like actually um, the most difficult part of it. <laughs> you need to create the base. So the base I mostly create in Illustrator because it gives, that's, that's like very fast forward. I don't work that fast. <laughs> so that was the base which I used. And then normally I, I use this vector object. And I go into Photoshop. So with that one, I was kind of like satisfied. And afterwards, mm. I already had like a better sketch here. You need to find the right pictures. So I downloaded, I don't know, for sure like 30 different uh, sculptures to see which one, like, which one of the Greek statues would um, fit. So this one, for example, I, I just like, I then imported them and looked, okay, is the nose the right perspective or not? In the end, um, I ended up with those. I was like pretty satisfied. Um, still, you can see it's like a work in progress. I'm, I have like a complete video on the web page. It's just, it took me like three days to make it because I also had to try in between because I can't shoot a video of doing it if I don't have time to test it out in between. Um, so I was searching for the textures um, and then I was like trying to get color, give color to the cube. It's like very important. The most important thing in illustrations is to get the light uh, source right. If you do a 2D de design, it's like not that important. But if you do something with 3D, it's important that it looks real. Like I don't care too much about where the, if there are like little details which don't fit, but like in the general object, 
has to be uh, has to fit like from the light so if in this case it was very important i tried out like hundreds of textures because it was also like very important to find a good one um, and in the end um, i just um, adjusted the colors and at least that was the structure of the cube now we have a fast forward here it looks already much better <laughs> um, I think it's very important to add details because um, Illustrator has a lot of advantages, but one big disadvantage is like very clean. And real life is not clean. It's like nothing is straight. So I prefer to, even if I first use Illustrator, I prefer to fuck it up afterwards. So I'm kind of putting in small details which show like, okay, um, this is maybe not straight. Um, the line is not totally straight, like you have to kind of make some matches and put some dirt in there. And this was the final image. And this is how it looked on the page. It was very nice because it, was, um, it includes a step-by-step -step, um, interview, which means like you could redo it if you would like. So let's jump to the next one. I'm also very inspired by repetition. Repetition means, of course, if you repeat a lot, it's a pattern. Um, it's very nice because the human eye is used to repetition, but if you change like r really small details, then it's kind of like you're caught in the image and you're trying to make out what is different. So that's like a base of design. So those are reference which I think illustrate that pretty good. It's like very geometric shapes, repeated a lot of times, um, which make it like very interesting. So those are like image of Bauhaus, uh, Magritte, and August Herbin, where I think it's like it's a very. I'm pretty sure I spelled the name wrong because he's French and I don't know any French. But anyway, so I had the chance a couple of months ago to work for Metro Madrid. I'm presenting this here because I think it's very fitting. Um, they open the line, it's called um, the Linea Dief. Um, they made, actually made an illustration of every line, but I got the line 10. Um, and as illustrator nowadays, I do a lot of illustration for social media. It's kind of pro producing content. So this I did together with Yorokobo. And they said, OK, can you play around a little bit? Let's use, for example, the carousel, because it was for Instagram. Carousel is like the way you look at 10 images in one. Um, I have like a slight problem with metros. Um, I feel very uncomfortable being in there. I'm a little bit claustrophobic, in, in, in Barcelona at least. There are a lot of people in the metro always. So also like Fiestas del Barrio, they freak me literally out. I'm not going nowhere near them. So the first image which came into my mind, for, like thinking about metro, was this one. And I was like, oh, how should I? You have to illustrate like something nice, positive about it, of course. And the thing is, I have a good advantage here in Spain. I'm pretty tall. So which means I'm still like half, half a head bigger than all the others, so I have enough air to breathe. That also changes the view you have. So what I see mostly is hands and like a little bit of head and stuff going on. So I thought, okay, maybe I should take that as inspiration. Made a picture of that to show you that. Even that's like an Austrian girl, she's also very tall. <laughs> and also, I've, as I thought, like repetition, can be used, it's like a very good way to use it because um, in the end, the windows of the metro, of a metro wagon, are the same. Every time, even if you, it's kind of just as a film, so if you um, use them very, very fast, you see always the same. So the sketch looked like that. I thought, okay, different hands making stuff. Then I started to think about, okay, what can they do? I'm. You have, you as, as a designer or like in every part of life, you have to know how to help yourself. So if you can't draw hands, like I'm one of them, 
you have to take pictures of it. So I took my studio partner, Arno, and I said, OK. Like, him, I, gi I gave him uh, the thing you sweep the floor, a mop. And I went, OK, this is the metro bar, so do whatever you want. So we made a lot of pictures. And then in the end, I started to draw with them. It's like the most easy way to draw something up is like using geometry. So in the end, um, this looked like that. In the end, those are like hands which are repeated, but I changed like small um, details to make them look different. Those are like 10 windows um, filled with kind of inspiration of the line 10. Like this is like, this was really funny because um, it was still like, it was the Tinder thing. I thought it would be nice if two would use Tinder in there and would find each other. That's probably like a joke, just I understood about the whole image, but you have to build in some stuff for yourself too. And that's a picture of those. Another thing which inspires me a lot is, in general, you have seen that already. In the end, my inspiration merges, kind of. Always, I'm using a lot of geometry. Also, I'm a huge fan of geometry of objects, um, especially if it's like used in a very playful way. So I don't know if if you know um, these um, furnitures, for example. Um, I'm a big fan of Bauhaus. I'm I actually did some projects for it too. Um, and I also find a lot of objects like on, on my travels, which I get for the flat and then just put it somewhere. Um, most of those objects of the Memphis group are simply too expensive to buy, so I keep them as image <laughs> on my presentations. Maybe one day. So what happened that about a year ago, um, Eurocopo contacted me and I have a list of things I want to do and a cover of, um, of a magazine was on the list. And they said, OK, do you want to do the cover? And I was like, OK, fantastic. It's like you do the cover and the whole country sees it. It's very nice. So they asked me, like, do you want to make the cover? There's, you can do whatever you want. Just do your thing. I'm like, OK, perfect. And you think about the covers which already have been made. It's like, OK, there are a lot of very talented designers. Like, whole Spain is filled with loads of talented designers, I think. So and you look at that, and you're like, wow, OK, I have to do like, something very special. No pressure here. Um, and then, OK, what, what can I do? Kind of, what part, what do you want to do? And then I thought, OK, mm, I'm going to use the cover as my playground, because in the end, it's, it's that. It's a, it's a completely white cover, and I can do whatever I want. I thought, OK. Um, thinking about the kids' playground, I also thought I got to think about the designers' playground. I think, like, whatever, Memphis Group was an Italian group of designers and architectures, architects, um, and they developed um, a lot, of room, a lot of designs which are very strange and very playful. I think it always looks like a kid's room for adults. So I thought, OK, I'll take this as a reference. Now let's come to the very tricky part, because you have to know how, to, like, one of the most important things is how to place the type on the cover, because like, to be honest, you're, everybody of us is a little egoist. So I thought, OK, I want to use most of the space on the cover, so I don't want to have it like very small. So you start to look at the letters, because it's very important how you, how you use them in which composition. So this one was good, but there was a little space after the U. It's like, it doesn't work. Then this one had too much space up and down. This one, I like that. I like um, vertical designs. I thought, OK, maybe if I stretch it, um, then it would work out pretty well. And with that, I thought, OK, I'm good to go. Um, I did an illustrated version of it. Um, what bothered me, kind of, were the three O's. Um, the good thing about it is, mostly in design, if there's a problem and you manage to solve the problem in some creative way, um, it's getting a very good design. But you have to, like, 
you have to find um, the trick how to manage it. So I thought, okay, how, how can I change that? So I thought, okay, making these. And I thought, mm, it's like, I don't know. Additionally, I'm working uh, with a very talented guy and he was next to me. I was like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> and I'm mostly trying very hard then that it, it has to work somehow. And then he was just like, look, it looks either like um, an O and a U, a T, a nine, or a smiley face. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to throw that thing away. It's also very important, I think, as a designer to like, see when something doesn't work. So I decided to start over again. Um, I decided to show this because I'm also, I'm not a rocket. I'm doing a lot of testing, which if you just see the final project, you don't know how long somebody had, had time like to just think about the composition, for example. Um, because I have the feeling sometimes if you, have, if you see a lot of good designs, you think they instantly sit down and in 10 minutes, this is like pops up and it's not like that. So um, I decided, then I thought like, I thought, okay, mm, doesn't work. Let's try something else. And then I thought, mm, like Yorogobo is, is being happy, so also kids are happy. It means like movement, moving around. And I thought, okay, I'm going to move the letters. I thought that's a, kind of okay, but then I didn't like it. Then I got sad. I always have a sad part if a project doesn't work out very fast. I realize, mm, maybe we can use black and white, like sadness, happiness, yin yang. Looked at it and I thought, no, um, let's go back. So then I went back and I stretched the type I had before. So it would fit in there. There's still a little space, but I thought to just cover it up because I'm doing illustrations. So I just thought, okay, put something in there. Put it on the cover, fit perfectly. And I thought, okay, um, fast forward. <laughs> I started to, okay, this is like the, the ground composition I'm working with. Now imagine, it's a little bit hard, but I do that very often. Imagine you are somebody who is standing on the ground of the, of the um, magazine and you're moving those parts, like optically. So I started to play around having the, the how is it called? The playground in, in mind. And that was the final part. Like, that's a big jump, <laughs> but it happened very fast. So that was the magazine. Um, and I was, I'm pretty happy with it, actually, uh, which doesn't happen too often. <laughs> um, another big inspiration I have is grids and systems. Why? Um, I think sometimes, in general, we are pretty lazy. I'm, I'm lazy, so I like to find a system behind some design and repeat it over and over again. I think that's very convenient. Um, for example, the, the impossible artworks, it's like the base of it is a system. So then how you work it out is completely, it's completely um, your decision. It always looks this, like different, but the system behind is the same. So systems and grids give me the right framework um, to stay creative, but with, within a certain border. And I think that's like kind of good. Um, maybe that's because I'm Austrian. I'm, you know, we are structured and very organized. Um, maybe I don't know, it's just because it's me. So I like to work with, for example, this is a base for me to work with. It gives me just um, a good point to start with and then probably get very far away from it. But it's a good way to start the design. The same happens here, isometric grid. It's very easy to, to start to make a design on it. A lot of my uh, impossible compositions are made on an isometric grid. It's like the easiest way. I don't have to invent myself the letters. I just use some common base, which is already existing. Mm. Very boring, but you can make very interesting designs on it. <laughs> so, you see, it's like the more limitations you give yourself, the more creative in the end you have to be to get to like to jump just over the limitations you have. So, Adobe contacted me last year to develop a workshop 
with a lot of people. So they wanted to have a workshop on design festivals where, let's say, 30 people could work together, but in a digital way. It's something which I've never done. Like, since everybody of us is working with a computer, it's not that easy anymore to work together. Like, you remember when you were small, you had the A4, you draw the head of a guy and then you folded it and passed it to somebody else. So that was kind of the idea we wanted to do, but in a digital way. So based on that there were a lot of people involved, we thought a system would be the easiest way um, to get this working. And as it was a really big project, um, I decided to get some help. Additionally, I have a lot of talented friends with whom I would love to work one day, so I have also a list of those. <laughs> so I decided to work with um, a friend of mine from Austria. He's called uh, Daniel Trindl. He's a very good friend of mine. He's like the opposite of me. He works very clean. He um, doesn't love, to, he simply doesn't use details. He just loves Illustrator, I love Photoshop, so it's like, okay, maybe like the mixture, we're getting something nice out of it. So, in general, what we did was that. As like the whole project was a digital co collaboration, so a lot of people working on the same artwork, um, we thought, okay, what if you split up an artwork in different parts? Um, and then you put it together again, so even if um, technology helps you to do that, so a lot of people can put, can have their input in one artwork and you create something collabor collaboratory, blah, a collaboration, you know. <laughs> so we made a video, I think I, like that's the easiest way to show, it's like a pretty big project, so I'll explain it to you, but I will also show you a video where I'm speaking very beautiful German, but it has subtitles. Birgit und ich haben gemeinsam studiert, aber Birgit war zwei Klassen über mir, oder? Ja. Genau, die war schneller. Sie war ein bisschen schneller. Ich bin genauso in den Bergen aufgewachsen, gar nicht weit weg von der Birgit. Gemeinsam haben wir eine riesengroße Vorliebe für Illustrationen und das ist eigentlich das, was es ausmacht. Und genau. irgendwie merkt man, wenn wir gemeinsam arbeiten, haben ziemlich viele Parallelitäten. Man merkt so, wir sind uns ziemlich schnell einig und somit harmoniert das eigentlich ganz cool irgendwie. Ja, die erste Idee ist auf jeden Fall immer analog. Das Spazierengehen, Idee haben. Ich bin ein ziemlich digitaler Mensch, ich scribble nicht so lange, ich brauche meistens eine digitale helfende Hand, um zu sehen, ob sowas funktioniert oder nicht. Es geht auch um eine Kollaboration und die Entfernung zwischen Wien und Barcelona war auch immer Thema. Irgendwie war es interessant, was kann man machen, wo man dann ein großes Ganzes haben und dadurch hat sich ja eigentlich das Alphabet ziemlich angeboten. Da wenn man in der Cloud direkt arbeitet und wir arbeiten beide an derselben Pfeil, aber es ist ständiger Wechsel und, und wann. Die Birgit arbeitet an dem Shape und ich an den anderen und, und obwohl sie gar nicht neben mir sitzt, ist, äh, verändert sich die Datei permanent. Und das, hat, das hat man eigentlich vorne nicht gehabt. Das ist wie so ein Spiel, ne? wie sich eine ganze Schrift auf einmal entwickelt und plötzlich wird sie zum Leben erweckt eigentlich. Man arbeitet meistens mindestens mit zwei Programmen. Mhm. Ich habe immer Illustrator und Photoshop ja. offen. Und das ist ein fließender Übergang von einem zum anderen. Ja. Die Cloud macht das jetzt natürlich nur ein bisschen fließender. Ich arbeite sehr viel mit Fotos, mit Noise und dadurch benutze ich Adobe Stock. So ist einfach eine große Auswahl ist an Fotos. Zum Beispiel für Adobe Make It haben wir ziemlich viele Makroaufnahmen verwendet, weil die sich im Alphabet extrem gut machen. Das sind Sachen, die man normalerweise, wenn man rausgeht, mit einer normalen Handykamera nicht machen kann. Wenn wir kreieren und gestalten über die Cloud, indem es nur zu zweit gemacht, machen wir gemeinsam mit 24 oder 30 Leuten während dem Workshop. Also das ist wirklich toll an dem Ganzen ist, wir haben ja dieses geometrische Alphabet und jeder bekommt eine eigene geometrische Fläche und der eine arbeitet an einem Teil von dem A und dann der eine Reihe weiter hinten arbeitet an einem anderen Teil vom A. Und das Coole ist, es ist eine Kollaboration und keiner macht einen eigenen Buchstaben. Der Rest haben wir Postkarten aufbereitet, indem wir halt nochmal kurz drüber gehen, leichte Korrekturen machen und dann den Workshop-Teilnehmer ihre eigene Postkarte schenken. 
Also es macht ja immer Spaß, zusammen zu arbeiten, aber es ist in der digitalen Welt, finde ich, schon ein bisschen schwerer, weil jeder seinen Computer hat, jeder macht sein Ding. Und von dem her ist es super, zusammen an einem Pfeil arbeiten zu können, also in Echtzeit. Super. I thought I would explain it a little bit, like also now, because it's pretty, it's pretty big project. So what we did, we created a modular type, which means like if you have a look from far away on, on typography, you see that it's consisting out of, this is just a, a, a way to explain it. Uh, you can see that it's like consisting out of different elements. In, a, in the end, those are like, it's basic geometry. So if you reduce this type to its um, shapes, it would look like that. So out of, out of that, you could like build a whole font. So that's what we did. And then the general idea was, OK, we have those shapes. So we give um, the, the half pipe, we give it to you, for example, and you design it. And then you save it at the same time um, with the Creative Cloud, it updates. And in the design, you're working live everybody at least like 30 people at the same time on one file it's kind of nice because i feel that everybody in design you have a certain ego and you want to have your design standing out and to make something um together is a new approach it's really nice so in the end this would look like that so we started to explore different directions like making I like <laughs> the very difficult examples are from me because I thought, okay, it would be nice if there are like loads of people who could work on a C. But in the end, um, we also tried an isometric one. But in the end, we thought, okay, we make a bold alphabet with a lot of space so everybody has at least one part of a leather, which is big to design. Um, the alphabet in the end looked like that. And because we, we were working with a lot of people, those were the elements. In, you could like rip them down to have just like six or I think nine elements channel to build like the whole alphabet, but we made more of them so everybody could have at least three elements to work on. Then we saved those in the cloud and started to work together. It was funny to try it out because Dani lives in Vienna and I live in Barcelona, so what we did, um, we just Skyped. <laughs> and then started to test out the, the font to see if it would work. So our first test looked like that. <laughs> and Danny is very straightforward. Um, so when I did stuff, he just said like, no, 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 that can't be. And then I designed something, he designed over it. So it was a constant change. So what we also did, we used quite, it was nice to see that you could use pictures um, because like, I didn't expect all the people who participated in the workshop that they can illustrate. So I just thought, okay, you could also use um, images. So we got a lot of credits from Adobe Stock, so everybody could at least try to compose the alphabet on his own like he would like to. So there were a lot of people who worked with images. Um, some like just downloaded patterns, and some were designing. Um, so this is, for example, a process of one alphabet. This was made, I think, over two days. So you can see there's a lot of change still. We started and then we decided, oh no, this doesn't look good because you're working at the same time on the file, you have to get a sense how, in which direction you want to go. Um, then we designed um, major signature pieces for all the different cities we gave the workshop. So this was for Zurich. Vienna, we always used, we always tried to use um, stuff which was important in a certain city. So, for example, in, in Berlin, um, we tried to use uh, textures from the metro there and so on. And the last one was Munich. So, we also made the alphabet. The kind of, you see, like the structure behind it is always the same. We just filled them um, in different ways. So, while giving the workshop, we gave 10 workshops and made four alphabets. So we had like 14 different alphabets um, in less than a month. It was a pretty nice outcome to see 
if you see that your system works, it's very nice then to generate like different range of designs. So that was one picture of the workshop. It's pretty nice because also we went around and helped the people. And those, for example, are different outcomes of days in the different cities. Like we tried to limit the color because it was very important to, so that in the end the end format would fit together. You have to use just a certain range of colors. Didn't work always, <laughs> but that was okay. So this was my last project. Eventually we made, that was uh, one really nice part. Um, a guy from Fontself, that's like a program, uh, extension you can install in Photoshop and Illustrator, came up to us and said, okay, uh, we can make a font out of this. And I've never heard that you could make um, a font out of first um, letters which had photos in there because fonts norm normally are SVGs. So and he's like, we can make a font of, out of it. So we did it and we have like fonts of the different cities. You can write. So a general advice for today, have fun. Um, thank you for listening to me, even if it was very early. Um, thank you. <laughs>